Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to day two of palette week where every single day for the next seven days I will be posting some sort of palette themed content. So if you like palette themed content and you're not yet subscribed, don't forget to do so before moving on. But today I thought it would be fun to chit chat about 12 eyeshadow palettes that I am glad I didn't end up purchasing. If you've been a subscriber and you know anything about me, I have a habit of <laughs> indulging in every single eyeshadow palette that I ever want like it's like an eyeshadow palette will come out I'll really want it and like there's no hesitation I buy so many eyeshadow palettes I recently did an eyeshadow palette declutter and I have too many eyeshadow palettes in general in my collection and I was surprised to even to be and I was surprised to even be able to come with a, come up with a list of 12 eyeshadow palettes that I really desired at one point in time and now I'm happy that I decided not to purchase. So if you're interested in seeing what those palettes are as well as potentially chit chatting about it in the comments below, stay tuned. First, if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content or chit chatting about eyeshadow palettes or makeup in general, I would love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on. If you like bookish content, I also do have a new book channel that will also be linked below. Would love if you'd go check that out as well. But other than that, let's get into the 12 eyeshadow palettes. I'm glad I skipped. All right, you guys, I have like a mix of like, some of these are like a couple years old and some of them I believe released this year or like end of last year. But we're gonna start with an old school palette and it is the Natasha Denona Sunset eyeshadow palette now i do have the sunrise eyeshadow palette which was a midi as opposed to the sunset which was one of her like full-size palettes 129 dollars after purchasing i do have my windows open so if it's a little bit loud i apologize but it's the fall and it's like the perfect time to have your windows open in minnesota before it gets too cold and you literally can't I also there's like an annoying bird as well anyway this was a full-size palette so after I purchased the Natasha Denona Lila palette I felt like I was obsessed and I was like having that feeling in my head where I just felt like I had to have literally every single Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette under the sun thankfully the price tag did make me like think twice about it or three times or four times and this is one of those palettes that like I feel like I finally talked myself out of it and then like a year later I was thinking about it again and almost purchased it but still talked myself out of it. I am looking at the Sephora website right now and it does look like this is on sale for half off but still I'm like I'm not even like the least bit interested in this at this point in time and even some of like my favorite Natasha palettes that I feel like truly are everyday palettes I'm thinking of like my full size Natasha Nona Biba I barely reach for that and the shades in the Biba palette are shades that I would reach for more than the shades that I'm seeing in the sunset palette so I'm really glad I did not spend my $129 on this palette would love to know if you guys own this one and what your thoughts are whether or not you like love this palette or not it still looks beautiful i just personally don't feel like i would have gotten enough use out of this palette i feel like i would have regretted purchasing this one and i'm very happy that i skipped it we can just get all of the natasha denona palettes out of the way right now i do have one that released earlier this year i think it is the natasha denona pastel eyeshadow palette now this one is one of the midi sized eyeshadow palettes it does retail for 65 dollars and this one released right around sephora vib spring sale time and i will be honest i included that in my sephora shop with me like for the spring vib sale and i thought 100 for certain like of the majority of the items that i had in my cart at that point in time this was one of this was going to be one of the products that i purchased no matter what because i felt like i was sort of getting that like collectionist mentality towards the Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes, I don't own them all. I don't even own all of the midi size palettes. But for some reason, I think maybe it was like pastels also releasing in the spring. I just felt like for sure I was going to get this one. But so many people commented on that video and were like, Steph, you do not need to purchase this eyeshadow palette you have the glam light ice cream palette you have other pastels in your collection that you always talk about barely reaching for so like why would you spend your money on this one and i almost reached a point where i felt like some of my subscribers some of you guys were going to be disappointed in me if i purchased that palette now i'll be honest like if i really like if this was like a, i felt like it was gonna be a ride or die product i had to have it i still would have purchased it we all know i would have but you guys talked me out of it and i am so thankful for you guys for doing that especially considering like my makeup consumption this year i have not done my makeup very often um 
I feel like 20, the end of 2021 and probably almost all of 2022 is like a year I wanna like leave in the past. It's been stress level 10,000 and I have not been doing my makeup that much. Um, I had a very demanding job for quite some time and I like was barely doing my makeup because I was just so freaking exhausted. Uh, and I just, I feel like I maybe would have used this palette twice and that would be where we stand with that and it was $64 and even with a discount I don't feel like it would have been worth it for me so I'm so happy that I skipped the Natasha Denona pastel palette I've heard nothing but great things about this palette and I have seen people do beautiful looks with it but even like even so I still don't feel tempted by this one anymore which I'm so happy about and then the third Natasha palette on this list is actually a mini size palette. So I have one of three different sizes and it is the, I just wanted to like look down and look at the picture. It is the mini bronze eyeshadow palette. Retails for, they are $27 now. They used to be 25. Um, you get, it looks like four mattes and one shimmer. And this I almost purchased because I do feel like, especially with these mini palettes, I do have that collectionist mentality because I purchased all but like maybe one or two of them. And I really like a lot of them. The mini nude is like such a good one. Also the, why am I blanking? I like the mini love, is it? Love mini nude. Mini nude is like my favorite. I don't know. Oh, the mini Biba, such a good one. And that one actually did release earlier this year as well. So I actually don't own the midi size Natasha Denona bronze palette, but I do have the Artemis palette. What is the one? But I do have the Alter Ego palette. That's like the dupe for it. And I just, I mean, I have so many warm brown shades in my collection. I didn't feel like I needed to purchase the Natasha Denona, Natasha Denona mini or midi. Um, so with this one, uh, it looks really, really beautiful. I just, before I clicked purchase, I told myself like, do you actually really need this? This looks pretty similar to the Natasha Denona Biba palette, the mini Biba, as well as I have the full size Biba. And it also looks pretty similar ish to the mini nude palette. I have the alter ego palette. I was just thought, like, do I actually need this? And ultimately I landed on the answer. No. And I've had no regrets about it since skipping this one. Do I think this would be a great palette if you want just like a mini pocket palette that has brown shades? Absolutely. Uh, but for me personally, and just my overwhelming eyeshadow collection, I'm very glad that I did not add this palette to it. Let's move on to Pat McGrath next because <laughs> Pat is also an incredibly expensive eyeshadow brand. I do have quite a few palettes from her, but I also have some that I was eyeing and decided to skip. So we can start with the Mothership vi is that six or is that seven because i thought six was i don't know this is the midnight sun i should have had from pat mcgrath i remember i almost purchased this palette on launch day because it's really that like bluey purpley like lilac periwinkle as well as the green and then the neutral brown like matte shades in this also drew my attention the swatches look pretty but what i've come to realize with pat mcgrath shades is I can just pick like the shades. Usually there's like two or three shades in each mothership palette that I'm like, ooh, like that is why I'm buying this eyeshadow palette. And I can pick those shades out and then go to an indie makeup website such as JD Glow Cosmetics, Clarity Cl Cosmetics. Um, what else am I thinking of? Give Me Glow Cosmetics. I can go to any of those websites. Cleota, you guys know, there's so many indie brands. Davina. And I can pick a shade similar to something out of the Pat palette. And I'll probably end up liking the indie shadow even better because I feel like indie eyeshadows are almost even more special personally. Pat fans don't come for me. I have nothing against Pat McGrath. I'm just saying like indie can do it just as good if not better for a lesser cost. And usually then you can like pick and choose your shades rather than I wouldn't use every single shade typically out of a Pat McGrath palette. So. I'm very happy that I skipped this. It would have been $125 out of my pocket. And I, I have found with most of my Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, with the exception of like Bronze Seduction, I just find myself not reaching into them. I think because a lot of them, I don't feel like I can get a complete look out of either. It's like usually I have to pair them with other palettes. So there's like that whole thing. Very happy that I skipped this one. You'll have to let me know if you own this one in your collection. Do you own other Mothership palettes? Is this your favorite Mothership? 
let me know in the comments but as of right now i'm very happy that i decided to skip that one next up on my list is the pat mcgrath bridgerton collaboration both eyeshadow palettes but i was more interested in the second eyeshadow palette that launched and my feelings for this kind of go hand in hand with what i just stated about the pat mcgrath shades i also didn't don't think any of her like truly special shades are included in either of these two six pans um i've heard people have gotten eye irritations from sh some of the shades within the palette and truly looking at like the color story and the cohesiveness cohesiveness of it all i don't feel like i would have gotten much use out of these now i maybe maybe I would be wrong because i will say my pat mcgrath six pan like the divine rose i didn't think i was gonna get a ton of use out of and i like love that eyeshadow palette but honestly it's like one of those things where it's like maybe if i don't know i don't care whereas if i did own it maybe i would have loved it but personally i'm totally fine and happy that i skipped the pat mcgrath bridgerton palettes coming in at number six on my list the last one from pat mcgrath and I'll kind of like do like kind of a pairing like I did with the Bridgerton palettes, but the large holiday palette for both 2020 as well as 2021. I almost purchased both of these palettes so many times, especially because I felt like specifically the 2020 palette in like the year end wrap ups, so many people were raving about this, this eyeshadow palette, but it was larger, lots of shades, which sometimes sometimes can be very overwhelming to me and the way that I consume my eyeshadow lately i've been doing like one or two very easy shades so even more so like now i'm like oh, i definitely don't feel like i would have gotten a ton of use out of it i still think the palettes are absolutely beautiful i have heard i don't think that there was any of the true special shades again from pat mcgrath but her foil shades are also very beautiful so if you're wanting to like dip your toes in pat mcgrath i think this would be a really good option but i have again so much eyeshadow in my collection so many singles in my collection i just don't feel like this would have added a lot of value and i don't think i would have reached for the palettes much because they were larger and i am someone who prefers anywhere from i feel like a 12 pan palette is like like that's a lot of shades for me i feel like these days so for me, I'm very happy that I skipped the Pat McGrath holiday palettes and I'll be skipping the 2022 palette as well. Okay, next up, I thought for sure I was gonna purchase this one on launch day and then I saw some reviews, I believe that like, that were like, eh, like is this gonna be good? So then I held off a little bit and then more reviews came in and I was like, okay, I definitely feel like I don't need this, but the Urban Decay Naked Cyber Palette. I felt like at that time I was consuming eyeshadow where I was using like eight different eyeshadow palettes at a time and liked something super punchy and super pigmented but then was trying to convince myself that I liked a one shadow and done look and from what I had heard this palette was really suited to those people who liked just like a lid topper on the shape on the eyes and so ultimately I just didn't feel like I was going to get the impact or the punch on the eye on the eyelid as I was looking for from my eyeshadow at that time, which is why I decided to skip that palette. I also feel like Urban Decay eyeshadow palettes have been pretty hit or emphasis on the miss for me. Like I liked the Urban Decay Not Naked Wild West and the Naked Honey also Stone Vibes, but Urban Decay Ultraviolet I was not a fan of. And then this year, the Wild Greens palette I thought was garbage in my opinion. So that like caveat always comes with the Urban Decay Naked palettes for me. I'm always like, ugh, I don't know if I wanna spend close to $50 on this eyeshadow palette that like I really don't know is going to work for me. So I skipped that one and I'm very happy because I feel like I, maybe saw reviews on that like the first week it launched and then like i literally haven't heard a thing about that palette since okay next up when this palette launched i was like who would want that palette but then i feel like heather austin maybe it may have been someone else was just like raving about how it's like a really good neutral brown eyeshadow palette and i was like oh neutral browns like i definitely need more in my collection um and it is the melt cosmetics brunette palette I literally almost purchased this probably three or four times and every time I feel like I have like a basket full of other things and I was like, oh, I'll just wait to get this neutral brown eyeshadow palette at a different day because I have other neutral browns in my collection. And then finally, ultimately, I was like, girlfriend, you keep telling yourself you have other neutral brown eyeshadows in your collection every time you go to purchase this palette. Like perhaps you just don't actually need to add this palette to your collection and i'm so glad that i made that decision because this would have been another almost 50 dollars out of my pocket 
And while I think I could have gotten use on this, sometimes the Melt Cosmetics formula just takes a little bit more finessing and a little bit more time to work with the shadows. So I could either have seen this collecting a lot of dust or just adding more neutral brown eyeshadow palettes to my collection that I like I really didn't need. So very happy that I skipped this one. Okay, next up, I feel like basically every palette within this line, if you will, falls into this category. But I'll specifically talk about the ABH Norvina 4 eyeshadow palette. I feel like every time the ABH Norvina palettes came out, I was interested, but talked myself out of them because they were larger palettes. And the color stories were just something I wasn't 100% I would get use out of. But when the number four launched, I was like, okay, I can piece together like enough like neutral shades that I could use this day to day. And I do feel like it'll be really beautiful. I've heard like great things about the formula and I was seeing really good reviews on this palette as well. But ultimately I decided to wait to see if it went on sale just because the original three palettes had gone on sale. And by the time it did go on sale, or I don't know if it ever has been gone on sale, I like forgot about it. I was scrolling through like the Sephora website trying to look at eyeshadow palettes that like I could include in this list and I totally forgot about this palette. So I'm very thankful that I skipped it because if it was that forgettable, it probably wouldn't have added that much value to my eyeshadow palette collection. And these retail for $60. Next up, I have the Glam Light Dirty Martini palette. And I absolutely absolutely love my glam light chocolate martini palette so the only reason i'm including this in this list is because i have so many other green eyeshadow palettes in my collection and don't get me wrong i love to do green eyeshadow looks but i don't do them all that frequently to the point where i felt like this green eyeshadow palette would add so much value to my collection that i would be doing green looks all the time like i feel like this would have just collected dust and gotten a few uses out of me from year to year and again my eyeshadow palette collection is overwhelming in a sense that i already feel like i have so many i just did the declutter and i just feel like this would have added stress to my collection because it would have been a palette that i'm like i like the formula i like how it looks but i don't want to do green eyeshadow every single day now if you are looking for a good green eyeshadow palette i guarantee based on the reviews i've seen and just like the color story in general you probably would be very happy with this purchase i just am glad that i went with the chocolate martini even though those shades are like probably more overlapping in my collection than the green would have been um i do find that i get use out of the chocolate martini because it is more neutral palette so I am happy that I decided to just go with one rather than getting two. In fact, I almost bought like the entire collection. Glad I just got the one. Uh, but I thought I would include that one on this list. This, this is another kind of like pairing of palettes, but the ColourPop Bubbly palette and the ColourPop Quartz palette. Both of these had my attention for so long. I almost included in them in some of my Ulta orders and I always thought about purchasing them. And then I like talked myself out of it on the ColourPop website as well. I just feel like, again, I have a lot of these shades in my collection and it wasn't something like so special that it would have been like game changing. Again, I feel like I, the, both of them probably would have gotten use in my collection, but also not add value to my collection. And although they're less expensive than like an ABH palette or a Pat McGrath palette, I feel like sometimes I think because ColourPop is less expensive that it like almost doesn't count, if you will, when I purchase it. But at the end of the day, it's still like, okay, that's like 12 or $18 out of my pocket for these palettes that like I really didn't need. So those were in and out in my in and out of my cart for quite some time again kind of forgettable in my opinion and i'm very glad that i didn't buy these and then the last palette on my list i wanted sort of to round out my collection but also because i do really like like the original but the Too faced born this way sunset stripped palette when i saw the teaser photo for this palette i instantly was like i'm definitely buying that on launch day no matter what and then on launch day, I almost purchased it. Like it was in my Ulta cart and I was on the Ulta website. And then I want to say I was like, no, I'm going to wait just a few days because I felt like there was a reason I was waiting. And then like by the time 
I was gonna purchase it. I was like, do I really need this like right now? Maybe I'll wait just like another week. And then another week became another week, became another week, became another week. And finally I was like, I literally have all these shades in my collection. I don't need to collect every single eyeshadow palette. This isn't gonna add any value. And it's just gonna be money out of my pocket. And I'm very happy that I have skipped this one. I have tried to be a lot more cognizant of both my makeup purchases and my palette purchases the last like six weeks or so since doing my makeup declutter because I don't want to have done that huge declutter to then just like bring a bunch of things back into my collection. If it's super special, like the Adept Cosmetics Plain Jane I purchased, like if it's special, special, then I have no problem with it. Or for example, the Huda Beauty Empowered palette just came out and I love the Huda Beauty palettes that come out every single year around this time of year that are like the 65 67 dollar price range and even though the empowered feels like a little bit overlapping with some of the things i have in my collection i also feel like there's specific shades that will really add value and overall i think i'll get a ton of use out of that palette so that being said <laughs> that is the end of my list that is going to wrap it up for today's video those are the 12 ish i know i did like buddy palettes with with some of them so it ended up being more than 12 palettes but those are the 12 ish palettes in my not collection in my not purchase collection that i'm glad that i skipped i would love to know in the comments below if you own any of these palettes if you love them hate them or what palettes are out there that you decided not to purchase that you're really happy you skipped let a girl know in the comments below other than that thank you so much for sticking around to watch today's video for supporting my channel as you guys always do i love you guys so much and i'll catch you in tomorrow's video bye